Here's your fourth must check everybody in social security news. There's a ton of information about this, so you definitely don't want to miss out on it. Nearly 1 in 5 Americans currently get social security benefits, and those monthly checks account for about 30% of the income for seniors. Many of those individuals saw the benefits stretched in by inflation over the past year. And now, as rising prices roll through gas stations, grocery stores, and the Medicare program, the future is starting to look a little bit brighter for social security beneficiaries. The standard monthly Medicare Medicare Part B premium will actually drop 3% to $164 in 2023. And that includes a historic cost of living adjustment, everybody. A historic cost of living adjustment that helps so many people out. And according to Yahoo News, beneficiaries are likely to be notified by the mail about their new social security benefit. And the social security beneficiaries are who were born from the 1st to the 10th of the month will get their payments on October 12th. And according to the SSA, these payments who have birthdates after the 10th will receive their checks later in the month. So social security beneficiaries are also based on lifetime earnings and at the age at which you first filed. So the maximum retirement benefit to new beneficiaries at full retirement age increases each year to account for changes in general wage levels. For example, that figure rose to $3,300 this year, up about 6.3% from the prior year. Given the trajectory inflation has followed, the maximum retirement benefit paid to first-time beneficiaries at full retirement age could actually increase another 6% increase next year, and bumping up the payment to $3,500 per month in 2023. Six months after reopening its public offices, the SSA is still struggling to restore basic customer needs and services and help other people out. So even as prolonged office closures caused applications for disability to plunge, the sluggish response now of the agency is meant to assist the country's most at-risk citizens who are who had led to delays in processing claims for those who managed to file them, and exhausting waits outside government offices around the country for those trying to as well. Nearly 20% of field offices have had more than 40 or more customers online for multiple days. And that's not good. People need help now. Good afternoon, everyone. Let me start by thanking the IMF and the World Bank for this week's meetings. Thank you also to Germany and Indonesia for their leadership of the G7 and G20. We've had a very productive week. Before I take your questions, I'd like to touch upon our progress in four areas. First, I spoke this week to my counterparts in the G7 and the broader community about the diverse and difficult challenges that face the global economy today. Many of these challenges stem from Russia's terrible war in Ukraine and the continued recovery from the pandemic. Inflation is elevated in many countries. Growth is slowing globally. We're also seeing swings in capital flows and strong movements in financial markets. But we're taking strong action both in the United States and globally to contend with these headwinds. In the United States, our economy remains resilient, bolstered by President Biden's economic plan but we're hi highly attuned to the risks of global headwinds. That includes those contributing to the high inflation we've seen in much of the world. Bringing down elevated inflation remains President Biden's top economic priority, even as we know the Federal Reserve plays the primary role in maintaining stable prices. Yesterday's CPI report shows that we have more work to do to get price increases under control. While some leading indicators show hopeful signs, working families are continuing to feel the pain of high inflation. Our administration is continuing to take a broad range of actions to boost energy supply, address housing constraints, and provide cost relief in areas like healthcare. It can take time to see the impact of these actions, but we know that they have and will continue to make a meaningful difference. The global economy also came together this week to address the array of urgent challenges before us. I, along with my counterparts from the major economies, agreed that while each country faces unique challenges, we must take decisive action. That includes tackling inflation, securing our energy supplies, and addressing other economic pressures. 
were also attentive to the spillovers of macroeconomic tightening from advanced economies to the rest of the world. I had the opportunity to speak with counterparts from a broad range of countries about the way global macroeconomic forces are affecting their countries. This week has left us better informed and better coordinated. We're determined about the jobs we have to do at home, and we're united around our collective effort to tackle our shared challenges. Second, the United States and our partners continue to mount an unprecedented and coordinated response to Russia's illegal and immoral war. Today at Treasury, we met with counterparts on efforts to degrade Russia's military industrial complex. The world's swift and multilateral response against Russia's aggression has worked. Russia has been forced to turn to suppliers of last resort like Iran and North Korea for low quality military equipment. We've also deeply weakened Russia's finances. Foreign investors have left in droves and projections indicate contractions in their economy for at least this year and the next. I also had an opportunity to meet with Ukrainian finance minister, Sergei Marchenko. I reiterated our admiration for the bravery and our support of the Ukrainian people as they defend their homeland. The United States is providing another four and a half billion dollars in grants for Ukraine, bringing our total direct economic assistance to 13 billion dollars. This assistance will support critical government operations and bolster Ukraine. The Transportation Secretary told ABC that inflation is Biden's top economic priority, and when asked about the release of oil from strategic reserves, he said, I don't think it's correct to say it has not made a difference at all. This is an action to help to stabilize global oil prices. Another factor affecting gas prices over the, over the past year has been challenges in increasing production. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm told CNN last week that she had expected oil and gas companies to increase their output more than ever. Economists at the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas argued that in May, production increases will not solve the problem of high gas prices. Oil and gas companies are also making are also reluctant to make long-term investments to increase production amid ongoing clean energy transition. Hundreds of thousands of Americans are expected to receive this. There are some are stimulus payment in the United States government in the bid to provide citizens with a needed financial boost. This is the second round of stimulus, which is part of the Essential Employee Premium Pay Program, which was passed by the Massachusetts Legislature in December 2021. The first round of premium payments saw nearly 240,000 people receive $500 checks back in March. The second round will benefit around 300,000 low-income, essential workers who should receive the same amount from the state. And the State Department of Revenue has shared that the first checks went out on June 6th. Folks, tell me what you think about this. Is President Biden doing all that it takes to send out more stimulus payments? Let's start with the Fed and that expected rate hike later on today, Jim. Uh, this morning, B of A basically says investors are pessimistic, whether it's 50, whether at 75 might see a brief risk on, but uh, they say best of luck. That's their new <laughs> best of luck. I mean, it, look, it is go big or go home. I mean, uh, Powell has to do something big, right? not just to appease the critics, but because look, we know that the good times have to signal an end. I think he wants certain industries that make less uh, in order to be able to have uh, not a hard landing, but a soft landing. He doesn't want them to make nothing. Uh, but David, we're at a moment when you read the research where everyone's trying to get ahead of a recession. And there isn't, there are very, I saw a piece on Ulta that was positive. Remember we used to talk about like when things were really bad, there'd be like a couple stops, tractor supply and Ulta. Yeah. The research reads like that now. I mean, you read it, you just say, wow, things, it's going to be a Tunisian recession. So all we're really trying to figure out is I how- I find a little hard to believe. Well, I do too, because the consumer's good, but then yes. we look at retail sales. Employment is still good. Yeah. Uh, very strong. Right. Um, I, I'm not hearing a doozy of a recession. Certainly there are many who believe there's at least a 50% chance we have a recession. But within that camp, many of those people would still say it's going to be fairly 
modest in terms of. You know, well, if that's the case, and you buy the stock market. Really, right now, but have we seen the revision in earnings estimates that we truly do? Depends on the are group. multiples really reflective right now of the decline in earnings that would take place even in a modest recession? Okay, that's a great. That's a great point. And I would say a new corp pre-announces today and selling in five times earnings. Well, that may be wrong. That it sells in five. Uh, What's Cleveland the typical sells multiple? Two. I mean, <laughs> That's two times earnings. Two years worth of earnings. Well, I mean, you're you're looking at maybe we uh, should, Ford and GM. We should put a group six. together. I did. I did that today for tonight's tonight's. No, I mean a group to buy it. Oh, yeah. You I mean, can like buy, a you can buy Cleveland for two. No, just two years worth of earnings. I mean, well, come on. look, I, look, I expect in honoring our promises to address comprehensive toxic act, also known as the honoring our pact act. Our nation asks a great deal of our service members and their family. We ask them to be ready to fight and to win against a wide range of security challenges across the globe. Our armed forces know and understand the threats they may face on the battlefield. Unfortunately, service members also face threats that aren't as apparent, exposure to toxic materials. These exposures can result in rare and sometimes fatal medical conditions. From exposure to Agent Orange to radiation from nuclear tests, veterans have carried an extra burden because of their service. It has too often been a struggle to recognize and address these impacts. Now, a new generation is dealing with the long-term effects of toxics 